think about this. Most people that come to the stock market, they've been doing something their entire life, their entire life, right? And for me, I try to sell vacuum cleaners. I try to sell knives. I try to do a lot of things, right? And none of that stuff worked for me. And I saw the stock market and I'm like, holy crap, I can make thousands of dollars a day. What's the next thing somebody want to do the next time they do it? They want to make $100,000 tomorrow, right? But no, it's a process. If you think about it, it took you 30 years to get to even find out about trading. If you say, I can do this for the rest of my life. If I can make $300 every single day, that's $75,000 a year. If I make $100 a day every single day, that's uh, on average, right? That's $25,000 a year. Think about somebody working a full-time job right now. They make $50,000 a year, say, for example. What is one thing they probably say every month? If I did not have to pay my mortgage payment this month, I can get ahead. You trade stock options. You make $100 a day. Your mortgage is paid every single month. But people don't think like that, CJ. That's, that's the thing about it. You, that's why I've been through it. I spend time with you and I'm telling you the real, mm. like you do not have to make hundreds of thousands of dollars. Mm. Make sure your rent, light bill, gas bill, mortgage, phone bill, child daycare. If all of that is paid from trading stock options, now you're going to wake up on December 31st, 2021 and look at your account. You got 25, 30, $40,000 in your account. Some people never had that amount of money in their account day in their life. Welcome to another edition of the Social Group Podcast. We interview dope people, man. Today is no different. What's up, man? What's going on? How you doing? I am amazing, bro. <laughs> Great hair. You know what's crazy? Yeah. You, you never dye your hair, right? Never. I never. thought it was a part of your look. No. I thought you <laughs> You got the gray hair. Because I, I got grays. Now, I don't have a hairline like you got it, but I do yeah, got grays, too. Yeah, you with the gray team. We, man, <laughs> you with the gray team. If only I had a hairline, I keep my joint. So, you like, you cut it? Like, you... God cut it. <laughs> <laughs> I took my hairline away. <laughs> oh, I, think I knew I'd be too arrogant with a hairline, so I uh, <laughs> took that joint away. But CJ, what's happening, man? No much, man. I'm glad to be here. Ah, thank you. I'm happy you're here. So um, you trade options, yes, sir. You make a lot of money doing it. I make decent money doing it. Yes. What has been your biggest day? My biggest day was actually fourteen thousand. Right. I know it's not a huge hundred thousand dollar day. The reason why is because I keep my I practice risk management to the T. Mm. I know myself. So if I practice, if I trade with a fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollar account, I'm end up being in one trade with seventy thousand dollars in that one trade. So mm. I try to keep my account balance anywhere from like ten to fifteen thousand. Make money, take out. Make money, take out. What's your average day trading? Average day, I look for anywhere around eight hundred to a thousand dollars a day trade. Really? Yeah. So That's some days I may make. A thousand, two thousand. Some days I may lose a thousand, fifteen hundred. But on average, I'm looking anywhere around eight hundred to a thousand dollars a day. Got it. Eight hundred to a thousand dollars a day. Mm -hmm. You trade every day? Uh, no. I should. Well, let me say this: you shouldn't trade every day because some days. Think about if I just want two thousand dollars. Why would I go back into the market the next day to potentially risk losing that two thousand dollars when I can take that two thousand dollars, take care of my mortgage, take care of my car payment, and then come back a couple days, maybe a day later or the next day. And trade again but the picture that you're painting right now is that trading is risky no i mean everything has risk associated with yeah. it but the thing about it is this what we have to understand as people and i know me and myself personally i have i have to practice risk management because i know if i make two thousand three thousand dollars on monday and i come in on that tuesday now i have three thousand dollars more in my account than i had the previous day so am i willing to risk three thousand dollars today when i just made it on monday or i can say okay it's five trading days in a week. What if I only trade three days a week? I've already made $1,000 uh, $1, for three days already. Why not trade three days a week? And I'm guaranteeing myself almost profit for the week. It's, it's all strategy because it's not, a it's not a race, it's a marathon. Yeah. I can do this every day for the rest of my life. If you can do something every day for the rest of your life, why do it every single day when you know you can do it every day for the rest of your life? So your... Um your biggest day was 14,000. Mm -hmm. How did you make the 14,000? Because to my understanding, mm -hmm. to be able to make a certain amount of money, you have to put up a certain amount of money. Yes, yes. So, so crazy thing is this. This was actually an option, uh, not an option play, but it was an uh, earnings play. Okay, so every quarter, every company has to report their earnings. Mm -hmm. So Netflix, for example, I'm always down on Netflix, right? But Netflix reported their earnings. And the stock dropped straight down and it stayed down. So at 3.59 p.m., 3.59 p.m., the market closes at 4 p.m. At 3.59 p.m., I purchased like two, $3,000 of uh, puts on Netflix. 
soon as 401, 402 came, they reported their earnings. Their earnings were bad. They missed their earnings. The stock price, boom, dropped down. Again. Dropped straight hold on, you're, Hold on. You're saying the stock price. Okay. So hold on. Hold on. Mm-hmm. Before Netflix um, posted their earnings, yes, you're sir. saying they're up a certain amount. Let's say they had $400 random. Let's say $400. Right. Mm-hmm. And you knew it was going down. No, I didn't. A earnings play is a guess. It's no strategy. There's no type of tech, technical analysis you can do. You're literally saying they're either going to hit or they're going to miss. I said they were going to miss, right? And I put like two, three thousand dollars on it. Okay, so I got in at three fifty nine. While the stock price is around four hundred dollars, hypothetically speaking, at four hundred one, four hundred two, the stock they released their earnings. They missed their earnings. The stock price went from four hundred, maybe like three twenty five, and just boom, dropped down. So you guessed. It's a strictly guess, an earnings play. You don't teach people to do that, though, right? I teach people to take earnings play every time. This is why I teach people. But it's, you might as well just go to Vegas then if, you, if you're <laughs> no, doing it like that. No, think about this. Our earnings play come around once a quarter. Mm-hmm. Okay, think about if you're working a job, right? If you're working a job and all quarter you've been grinding out, grinding out, grinding out, making money, making money, right? And say you hypothetically you made ten thousand dollars that quarter at your job, would you be willing to risk three hundred dollars of the ten thousand you made on an earnings play? I don't understand. All right. So say, for example, you work in your, like you work in your job, $10,000 that you put in your pocket that you made and the boss come around and say, hey, everybody, you can put $300 in this pot. You can potentially make $2,000. Mm-hmm. Would you say I'm willing to put in $300? I've already made $10,000, but I'm willing to put in $300 to possibly make $2,000. Of course, I'll do that. That's what an earnings play is, because you've grinded all quarter. You've made money all quarter trading stock options. Now you get to the point where, hey, earnings coming up for Netflix, put two, three hundred dollars in, you can potentially make two, three thousand dollars, a thousand dollars, whatever it goes to, right? Or you may lose your three hundred dollars. Is it worth the risk? Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's not an everyday play. It's a once a quarter play. So it happens four times a year. Right. But where's the strategy in knowing if it's gonna go up or down? There's no strategy in it. I mean, you can look and see, you can look and read some articles about how how Netflix has been uh, performing throughout the quarter, things of that nature. But this earnings play, and this is just sim- this is simply something that you do. Like when you say, okay, I'm gonna shoot a half court shot at, at, at with two seconds left in halftime before halftime, right? It's a simple. You either win, or you don't. So it's not no. So there's no, no strategy, strategy but it's, it's it a, allows you to. Low risk, high, high reward. reward. There you go. And it's like you've grind, you grinded all quarter. Put a couple dollars of your winnings into it and see what happens. I see what you're saying. So this is for the people that are actually making money in the, in the market. Mm-hmm. You put a couple dollars inside. You had $2,000. We're like, yo, if I lose it, I, I lose it. it. Exactly. If I win it, I win it. But 14000 when I woke just up the, to win. When I woke up the next morning. So the next morning, I woke up at, well, not woke up, but the market opened at 930 at 931, that's fourteen thousand dollars there. Dang. It was crazy. <laughs> Alright, what's your biggest loss? Uh I lost roughly around like ten thousand dollars in one day. Dang, that's I lost sixty two thousand dollars when I first started trading stock options. Sixty two thousand dollars. Uh I threw some things against the wall. I would have cried. <laughs> and it wasn't all at one time, right? It was the whole process, right? It was a process. I would, uh, when I first started, I started with twelve hundred dollars. I turned that twelve hundred dollars into four thousand dollars in three weeks. Five day, three to five days later, that four thousand dollars turned into five hundred dollars. I'm like, holy crap! What just happened? Because I didn't know what I was doing right. at all. I just somebody just listen set my screen up for me. They threw me in the ocean. They told me to go swim, and that's what I did. And um, at the end of it, that time winning some, losing some, sixty two thousand dollars I lost. So not sixty two thousand in a day. No, no, over the course of time. I got while you. I was trying to learn this process. I got sixty two thousand dollars because I would win some, but like I may win four or five hundred dollars, right? But then I'm losing like, oh crap! I lost a thousand. I lost fifteen hundred. Mm-hmm. Oh, the next day I may win five hundred, but my losses were more than my wins, and I had to figure it out. Got you. Mm-hmm. So, and how long have you been trading? Uh, rough around three years. About three years. Mm-hmm. Did you make money your first year? No, that's when I lost the sixty two thousand. God, so you made you you're yeah. at a negative sixty thousand, but you didn't invest sixty two thousand of your own money. Yeah, no. So over the course of time, I had to keep putting money in. So I'm losing. Oh. I got to keep putting money in, losing, keep putting money in, and so on and so on like that. So yes, it was my own money. So what's your risk tolerance? I mean, yo, at, you know, it is a good question too that I was asking the other day. 
Um, when do you know when to quit? For the day. Period. Yo, <laughs> this, this is clearly not for you. You lost right. $62,000 yeah. mm -hmm. this year. Yep. And you were working a job, I'd imagine? Yes. Yeah, How job. much were you making? A uh, made over 100000 a year. Making a hundred thousand a year, and you lost sixty two. Do you have like savings of this? Yeah, like I mean, I had money. Like I had other. I had a trucking company, gotcha. dispatching company. You know, I had other things as well. Gotcha. Okay, and you still work a job now? Yeah, I'm a uh, where you work? Senior vice president at uh, I don't want to say the company name, but a Fortune five hundred company. I'm a senior where? vice president. So Make good money there. Yeah, decent money. I have an expiration date though. My uh, I work from home, so I have an expiration date June twenty twenty three. June twenty twenty three. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. but you make good money there. Yes. And do you make more on your job or in trading? Trading. Trading? <laughs> That's why. Like, I have a uh, I have a boat company as well, like a boat rental company mm -hmm. where I uh, rent out pontoon boats in Lake Wiley, South Carolina. If I had to choose between my boat company and my uh, job, I'd throw the boats in the water and let them drown, <laughs> let them sink. And now I tell my boss, man, I appreciate it. So you work a job now for a Fortune 500 company. You do well. Yeah, I do. And but you make more in trading mm -hmm. than you do on your job. Yes. Why do you stay at your job? Uh, so great question. So this is the thing about it. When I so when I was at Bank of America, right? Uh, the guy that I work for now I met him when I was at Bank of America. So I met Bank of America, and then he left and retired and went to Wells Fargo. So he brought me over to Wells Fargo, right? Then when he left Wells Fargo, he brought me over to the place we are now. Mm -hmm. So when he brought me over there. I uh, worked with him for a while, and then actually a couple months ago, I told him, hey, it's time for me to, you know, time for me to get out or move on. And then we actually came up with a date of June 2023. The thing about it, I work from home, yeah. and I have freedom. So all about having multiple streams of income. Mm -hmm. In the process of trying to buy, I was in the process of trying to buy a house for two years, right? So what did you have to have? A W-2 to make sure that you had the income to do all that stuff. So all of those things played a major factor in me staying in my job. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So you get money from everywhere, huh? I'm not gonna say from everywhere. It's just uh, all praise to the most high. I just, that's why I tell people, all praise to the most high because where I came from to where I'm, at, where I'm at right now, where I came from five years ago to where I'm at right now is ridiculous. Gotcha. So um, first year you lost 62,000. Second year, you mind sharing what you made in trading? It was rough. It was it was roughly around less than a hundred thousand, right? Less than a hundred thousand, and then the third year and so on. That's when I kind of things just really started rolling. I getting better and better and better. Still having losses in there, wins and losses, but things start rolling. I started. Uh, I call it my baby face phase. Your baby face phase. What does that mean? <laughs> the baby face phase. So uh, it's this thing called the trading, the psychology of trading, R and B psychology of trading that. Uh, that I came up with, right? So the first stage is stock. Like when you first want to get into stock options. Think about Tevin Campbell, uh, Can We Talk, right? So think, you first see that stock market, it's beautiful. It's a shiny object, and in the song, Tevin Campbell said he see this, he see this woman over there, he wanna get to know this woman, he thinks she's so beautiful, he had to introduce himself to her, right? The same thing with stock options. Stage one, you have to introduce yourself to the market, okay? Now, once you introduce yourself to the market, that's stage one, you're good, okay? Stage two is Ed Sharon, the song Perfect. You introduce yourself to the market or you introduce yourself to that uh, your significant other. And now you take them on that first date. If you go back and watch the video with Ed Sharon on that first date, he said, this woman is perfect. She's beautiful. I love her. Like she's everything I want in life. So while you're learning stock ops, you like, man, I can make 200, 300, 400, 500 dollars a day. This is everything. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you start trading stage three. This is when I lost at 62,000. I was in stage three. Right. Mm -hmm. Stage three is. New edition, can you stand the rain? Because you're going to be winning some, losing some, winning some, losing some, winning some, losing some. You're trying to get to your consistency as a trader, mm -hmm. right? It's the hardest part. The same when you're in a relationship, where after you done went through that butterfly stage, the googly moogly stage, you get into a relationship with, the, uh, with that significant other, now you start having arguments. She fussing, fighting, fussing, fighting, this and the third. Mm -hmm. But if you get through all that, right, you get to stage four, baby face. Every time I close my eyes, I thank the Lord that I got you. And when you get to that stage, you like every morning you wake up, you have the potential to make three, four, five hundred dollars, thousand dollar days, right? And it's everything. Like the, the moment is everything. So the same thing with your uh, significant other. Once you get past new addition stage four, now it's time to get married. Babyface. I like that. So your third year, what'd you make in your third year trading? 
third year, right around a hundred. Right around a hundred thousand. Right around a hundred. Gotcha. And what what I what I was so was what was so impressive is that you trade live. Yeah, I trade live sometimes. Yeah. That's why okay, that is that's actually why you're here on this show. Because <laughs> there's not a lot of people who um will do the thing that they especially in trading, mm-hmm. there's not a lot because there's a there's a potential that you could lose. Oh yeah. And that's not good for branding unless you're you and you're saying, oh, well, yo, this is this is the game. You win some, you lose some. Right. You win some, you lose some. The objective is to win more than you lose. Yep. I mean, I trade live right here, right now, if you, if you wanted to. But the thing about it is I trade live because I show people, I want to show them the truth. Yeah. You're not going to see me, you're not going to see me just post, oh, I made $4,000 this day, $3,000 this day, $2,000 this day, and I mess around and have a $8,000 loss in my Instagram silent. Right, you go to my Instagram right now. You're gonna see. I think I even might have had a twelve thousand dollars loss on it. I don't know, ten thousand, twelve thousand, nine thousand dollars loss. You're gonna see it because if I tell you that, hey, I'm doing something. If I tell you, hey, I'm doing this this challenge where I'm gonna make, I'm gonna try to make fifty thousand dollars in thirty days, and I'm gonna show my wins and losses every single day. I'm going to show you when I win and lose, no matter what. And I trade live. You're gonna trade live with me. You're gonna learn something. If I win or lose, you're gonna learn what I was looking at. I'm gonna tell you why I lost. If I lost, if I won, I'm gonna tell you why I won. I believe being transparent parent people is the most important thing because that's what I was missing when I first started. Yeah, I normally, obviously, we interview people who, you know, they make millions and, you know, they're um, they're doing some amazing things, but I think it's important that people see people like you as well mm-hmm. who have a job. Like, yo, you're not even claiming to say, yo, I'm going to teach you how to make millions of dollars. No. You're teaching people, yo, we can make a few hundred dollars a day. That's why, right. I re- that's why the, and this interview is a little different mm-hmm. because, um, um, we are seeing the evolution of you mm-hmm. right now. I, I interviewed a young lady named Helani, uh, Miss Two Weeks Out, shouts out to her. When I interviewed her, mm-hmm. she had a job um, with the fire department. Nice. She had a job and she was building her brand. And then she left her job mm-hmm. and was just, you know, 100% building her brand. Now she's doing phenomenal things. And I like every now and again, I think we need to have people that are like in the grind and they are where the people that's watching is right now. Right, you right. know what I mean? So you trade, where'd you get the idea to trade live? Cause that is, it's kind of risky when you're talking about like this, this digital age of marketing and branding and personal. <laughs> right, right. Where'd you get that from? Um, just, just being transparent, honestly, it, it never, it was, it was like, it wasn't like a decision. Yeah. It's really like, okay, I'm trading right now. Everybody, you guys want to trade with me? Like, come on, let's, let's trade together. <laughs> so it's not anything. It's not I'm doing it to say, hey, I want to just, I want everybody to see. Uh, and then everybody's like, oh, what's going on? If I lose $5,000, I always tell people, I say, y'all, if I lose, I'm not, my computer's not going to accidentally shut off, right? <laughs> it's not going to accidentally shut off. If I'm losing $5,000, you are going to sit here and see me losing $5,000. you are going to see my emotions. You're going to see if I say, hold on, y'all, and go throw something in the corner. Like, you're going to see all that stuff. Really? This, this is real life. In real, in real life, you win and you lose. Right. But um, the main thing is over the course of time by watching me trade live, you're going to see that I'm winning more than I lose. Right. Mm -hmm. You're going to see when I made a thousand dollars and the next day I come back and lose fifteen hundred. I beat myself up. I'm like, Chris, that had to be the dumbest thing ever. You're smarter than that. Right. Understanding those things, because that's the same thing that people are going to go through when they go through stage three. New edition. Can you stand the rain? Why not show it to them? How are you as a kid, bro? I'm (laughs) curious. Like, what what was your personality as a child? I was actually quiet, man. I was as a child, I was quiet, very quiet. Really? Yeah, that's a, that's most part of what I remember from my childhood. I was quiet. Do you not remember a lot from your childhood? <laughs> I remember, I remember enough, but I do have some black spots in there. I don't know why. Probably because I was playing football and I was younger and I was small, and probably getting hit in the helmet. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that. And so, where, where? Okay, take me back before you started trading, like these last three years. What were you doing? Did you go to college? Yeah, I went to college. I went to South Carolina State Did University. Did you graduate? Uh, yeah, from, I graduated from Winthrop University. It took me about six yeah. years, but I made it. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I, I didn't, didn't graduate at all, so. Yeah, no. Hey. So, but, uh, so what happened was, uh, really in my life, I always tell the story what happened. The most high, I used to throw parties, right? So I was an event planner, uh, not a party promoter. I actually paid for the artists to come. So we used to bring, we brought people like Yo Gotti, uh, Gucci Man, the CIAA in Charlotte and things mm-hmm. of that nature. Uh, but one time I had a uh, 22 years old, I had a 745 BMW, 
right? 745 BMW, age 22. Dumbest thing I could have ever done day in my life. But anyway. Why? Because um, I was over leveraged. At 22 years old, I didn't have any financial literacy, and I over leveraged myself. But you was lit. Oh, yeah. No, I, I was 20. I used to say I was 22 on 22. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I over leveraged myself. And, uh, it was Hold on. You put 22s on the BMW? Yeah, I had 22s on. I had 22. I guess it was. that. What, what year is this? This was 2000. Tw- what? 2006. Eight, nine, yeah, that was that era. That was that era, yeah. Yeah, because <laughs> that now, was uh, now like I think that was before Jay Z uh yep. outlawed the rims. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yo, Jay Z was like, yo, <laughs> cruise the no used car. more. <laughs> yo, he said, yo, certain cars you do not put rims exactly. on. Okay, I got you. I got exactly. You. So, but uh, so I had that had that car, uh, peanut butter insides, right? But the thing about it was, it was the dumbest thing ever. But anyway, I think about it, and I just like, ah, oh, why did I do that, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, when I go back in the time frame, I used to throw the events, right? So. I was driving in my car and I literally like could feel the most high saying, Chris, if you trust me, I'll make all your, I'll take you place you've never been before. Right. And, uh, the night we bought Yo Gotti to the club, Yo Gotti's on stage, he's performing and I'm in the back of the club watching everybody's having a good time. I'm mad cause I ain't making any money, but, <laughs> but I'm, I'm in the back of the club watching and I just kept hearing the most high say, Chris, if you trust me, I'll make all your dreams come true. Right. Or I'll take you place you've never been before. So long story short, I stopped, I stopped on, had one more farewell uh, party and I stopped throwing parties and the most high took me through a wilderness stage. He was taking me out of my captivity into the wilderness and I, I, wasn't doing any type of business at all. I was just working a full-time job. But in that moment, I was having like praise and worship sessions in a two-bedroom uh, townhome. You know, me and my uh, fiance, well, she's my wife now, but she's my girlfriend, fiance at the time. And I would just have like praise and worship sessions in there and just getting closer and closer to the most high. And he just worked on me. And from there, uh, from there, he took me out of that place. And he, when he said, when literally he said he's going to take me places he I never thought was true, I'm right here talking to David Shans right now. Like it's ridiculous. What's your religion? What's your religious belief? Uh, I re- um, I'm an Israelite. I just, ah, ah, I'm an Israelite. Israelite, yeah. like a Hebrew Israelite. Yeah. Okay, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Not one of the ones that believe. Not one of the racist ones, I guess you can say. But I believe that. Oh, the only <laughs> black people can go to heaven. Yeah, yeah I'm not one of those. <laughs> but I do believe that we uh we all are the children uh the Bible. We are the children of the uh, Bible. Gotcha, gotcha. So uh, fast forward, you get into a corporate. Arena, yeah, right. How'd, you, how'd that happen? So, um, eight months before my wedding, I was at this job, right? <laughs> I was at this job working this company. I started working in that company. I was in, for, I think I was like 19, 20, 21, making eleven dollars an hour. Hmm. Seven years later, seven years later, I started making. Uh, I was making seventeen dollars an hour. <laughs> so I had a six dollar raise in nine years. Golly, yeah, it was it was crazy, right? So I actually went into. So I came into the house, right? To that two two bedroom con, uh, town home, and my wife is in, and like Nia Long and uh, on the movie Boys in the Hood, mm-hmm. I walked to the house like my man uh, Trey, and I started swinging in the air, crying and all that good stuff. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I love that movie, by the way. But I was swinging in the air, crying. I just literally told my fiance eight months before we got married that hey, I can't do it anymore. You know, I want to be the man to take care of my family, and I know I can't do it making seventeen dollars an hour. Yeah. So I quit. I quit that job, and I started working at uh, Lowe's, making ten dollars and thirty five cents an hour. Right. And uh, I worked there for about three to four months. And like I said, all praise to the most high August, the week at the week after or before we got married, I got a job working at Bank of America as a contractor uh, making $40 an hour. Mm. So I started making a jump. Yeah. So making a major jump. Right. It was crazy. So I made start making $40 an hour and then I got hired on at Bank of America. Then I moved to Wales and now I'm where I'm at right now. So gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Think of a number in your head. How much do you think it would cost for me a Pretty successful entrepreneur to coach you every single day to give you all of the game. I'm talking about every day for an entire year, Monday through Friday. I'm on I'm on a a virtual call teaching you how I've done the things that I've done and me updating you every single day in real time on all the business moves that I'm making, all the negotiations that I'm in, everything that I'm doing before I actually do it. How much you think? And let's say Monday through Friday, and then on Thursdays we do a Q&A where not only do you get a chance to ask your questions and get them answered, but you get to ha- you get to hear the answer from a whole community, hundreds of other people on a call, and you get their answers that are going to help you too. What do you think? And once or twice a year, get together, free conference that we all get to come to and you get to meet all these people that you see virtually. How much do you think that would cost every single year? 
10,000, not even close. It will probably be closer to 100,000 because it's just, I don't, I, I, my, my time is valuable and to give you the sauce that's gonna help you make millions, I'd have to charge you at least 100,000. But what I've done is created a community where you get the advantage of learning how to become an entrepreneur. You get to network with hundreds of entrepreneurs every single day. You got a community that keeps you inspired and excited. You will read a book club with us every single day. You'll also have an event where we come together once or twice a year for free. We do all of that for $399 for the year. Go ask somebody. I've got receipts of things that I built over the last decade, okay? Uh, I am willing to coach you. $3.99 for the year. Listen, go to themorningmeetup.com or click the link in this video. Um, let's get back to the episode, but keep in mind, I want to coach you. Let's get started. Yeah, it's making more than $4 an hour now, though. Yeah, yeah. Man. <laughs> Good. Okay, so how'd you get into trading? And the reason, I, again, I, I just recently had um, my man Quay on the show and he got, he showed me like, kind of he helped me understand trading and now I'm I'm really more interested in it now um but how did you get into trading so crazy thing was it was um me and my wife went to Myrtle Beach South Carolina for on a Valentine's Day just going I didn't even want to go honestly she like made me go so <laughs> we went down there and uh down there we were sitting at the bar having some uh, eating some food and having some drinks and then one of the employees at the actual Hotel said, hey, we're doing our first wine tasting. Do you guys want to be a part of it? I'm like, yeah, let's do it. So when we at that wine tasting, a group sat down, and they sat down, he sit, and this guy started talking, said he was on vacation for eight weeks. He's been on vacation for eight weeks, him and his whole family. Mm. The first thing I wanted to do was find out, how have you been on vacation for eight weeks? Mm -hmm. So I started throwing things out there that I actually do. So I had a trucking company at the time and a dispatching company, and I wanted to get an HVAC, right? And he, So I threw those things at him. He didn't bite, didn't say anything. But the couple we went down there with, he said, I want to learn about the stock market. When I tell you for the next three hours, this, my, this man's eyes lit up. And for the next three hours, he was talking about the stock market with us, talking about stock options. Oh, wow. And he said, I just can't, he said, I just made a thousand dollars on test before I came down here. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Right. So I, I really wasn't, I heard him, but I really wasn't feeling him. And what, one thing he told me though, what stood out to me, he said, listen, when a wealthy individual tell you to do something, you should at least look into it. Yeah. Right. So he said, listen, Chris, when you get home, call me. Right. And I'm going to set your screen up for it. So I called him. He set my screen up for me and he threw me in the ocean, and said, go swim. And that's how I found about stock options. Really? And ever since that day, I was in that. How much did he tell you to start with? He didn't say. I just <laughs> I just uh, I started off. I started off trading paper money for like five, 10 minutes. Then I put twelve hundred dollars in my account. Trading paper money. OK, mm -hmm. that's just like kind of like a demo. Yep. Demo fake money. It's the real market, but it's just fake. They give you like two hundred. Think of some give you two hundred thousand dollars of fake money. Do whatever you want to with. Right. Which app? Think or swim. TD Ameritrade. Think or swim is what I use. I have TD Ameritrade. I actually have stocks in TD mm -hmm. Ameritrade. Dope. So can I? How do I do that? What do I do? The, so you want to do it on your? You actually want to do it on your laptop, but you can do it on your phone. So you pull up Think or Swim, and you go to the top where it has your account. Go to like the uh, settings and go to your account. And you show me. Switch. Show me yours. Yep. Show right me yours. So right think here. or swim. Yep. So right here. Think or swim. I'm actually gonna. Uh, Download it now, too. So, so right here where it says settings, switch account. Hold on, there's, there's the app right here. It's like green. Yep, that's it. Right All right, so y'all can zoom mm -hmm. in real quick. So, think, think or, or swim. swim. It is this one right here. It's like a green. It almost looks like a starburst type situation. <laughs> yep, exactly. All right, exactly. so I can, I can download this. Yep, you download that, and you can actually switch from a real account or paper account. As long as you know your username and password. You know your username and password. For TD Ameritrade, yeah. So it's the same one. It's the same one, yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can I can go into my passwords real quick. Hold on, yep. let me see. Um, oh, paper money. Yep, you can do paper. Let's money. do paper money because I'm not ready. <laughs> and um, you may have a 15 minute delay right now because you don't you have to have set up real time quotes, but that's something totally different. I can't. I don't know where my password. All right, let me let me just go to like passwords real quick. Mm -hmm. say, say what you just said again. So you so when you're trading paper money, you have a 15 minute delay. Mm -hmm. And that basically that delay is it's uh it won't allow you it's the market would be 15 minutes after the real market. So because you have to have real time quotes to turn that on. Um, I don't understand. So think about if I'm trading right now. It's so I won't. So I won't be trading live. You'll be trading 
if it's two o'clock right now, mm-hmm. you'd be trading one forty five. So the stocks would be what showing one forty five, but it's actually two o'clock. But you can go into the system and turn it off. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So um I don't think this is the same account, the same login and password as my T D Ameritrade. Are you in uh let me see? Hold on a second. So this is my password and st- oh yeah, oh no, I did go in. Face ID? Oh bet. Okay, I must have just put it in wrong. Authentication is required for attempts. Enter your thinkorswim password. I don't have a thinkorswim password. All right, what I want you to do is hit cancel right quick uh-huh. and go back to skip. Back skip. To okay. All right. Oh, so all right, I'm in the account. Mm-hmm. My account balance is two hundred thousand dollars <laughs> of net go. liquidity <laughs> value. Let's how, go. How long is trading going on? Uh, from nine thirty a.m. to four p.m. That's the live market, but you have pre-market and post-market action as well. Mm. So we can trade stock options between 9.30 a.m. Eastern time and 4 p.m. Eastern time. So how would I begin trading? Like, what would I have to press? So, for example, on the screen, if you want to first move up to a watch list, look at this. So watch list at the bottom. Okay. Let's see if we look at a particular stock. And still get that mic. Still grab oh, that mic. I'll, I'll come closer. I got you. So let's look at a particular stock. Okay. This is Royal Caribbean, RCL. So you, you find a particular stock? Yep, you find a particular stock, and that's what your screen look like, right? Okay. So the screen look a mess right now, right? Well, I mean, it's real high, so maybe I should just bet that it's going to go low. <laughs> Listen, that's funny, though, right? I'm going to be honest with you. Look you know, at it. Look at my screen real quick. The stock is real high, so if I bet that it's going to go low, I'll make money? Listen, let me tell you this, though. That was my strategy when I first started. <laughs> <laughs> you remember when I said I took that four thousand to five hundred, lost with that four thousand to five hundred. Right. I was literally saying every time the stock went high, I was buying. I'm going to buy a put so the market can go down. That makes sense, though, don't it? It does make sense, but it doesn't work. <laughs> it, does it doesn't not work. work. It does not work. Oh wow. Okay. So now, if you want, say for example, you want to buy something, right? So let's go buy something. We can go to options. So the options at the top. And this, and then, is your, this is called your uh, option chain. Okay. Now, hypothetically Get the mic too. Oh, sorry. Sure. This is called your option chain. So I say hypothetically speaking, you wanted to buy this particular contract right there. Click on the one that says X.86. The right. X.86. Yep, right there. Okay. Blue. Mm-hmm. Point eighty six. okay. Now say if you wanted to buy 10 contracts, that's going to co- cho- uh, cost you $866. Okay. So hit review at the top. Hit review. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then hit send at the bottom. Send. Yep. And then you have to wait for it to allow you to get into the trade. And right now you may be on delay, so it may take longer. But if you want to see if you're in that trade, you can go to positions and look right there. So now you're in the trade and you see where it says PL day and it's red in parentheses. Yeah. That means you're down. When it goes oh, into green, much. that means you're up. Did I bet that it's going down or up? You bet you bought a call. A call is when you bet that the stock is going to go up. Why would I bet it's going to go up when it's already up? Well, we just we just playing around with it though. Like we just going to get your feet I wet. I still look at this as my real money. <laughs> okay, now I'm only down eighty five dollars, fifty five dollars. Okay, so it just keeps changing. You see how it's changing? Yep. This is some scary stuff, bro. No, I used to I call them trade attacks. Like when I used to be in trades, say if I got some thousands of dollars in trades, I used to call them trade attacks because your heart. And your emotions just everywhere, and you have. To, and when you first start not when you first start starting off, that's why I tell people to start off with a low amount of money because you need to understand that this is an emotional thing. Like your heart is gonna be beating out. Your I've been hearing. I've been hearing. Okay, so I've been hearing that trading is all emotion. Not all emotion, but it is emotional. It is emotional. So where where do where do we come in with people? That they say yo, they get um, where their emotions have caused them. Oh, yeah. To make a mistake. Oh, yeah. I don't know the plenty of time. So, for example, one week I was trading. I used to trade Amazon all the time. So, all week I've been busting Amazon in the head, right? I've been playing the bounce strategy all week. Bounce strategy. What does that so, mean? So, basically, when the stock is going down and it comes to this strong level of support, a support is like this floor right here, right? If I throw something at this floor right here, that means it's gonna something's going to bounce off of it and we can't fall through it. Okay, so that's the support level. And I will play it off a strong level of support. It bounces off support, goes up. I make $1,000, $2,000. So I'm up like $12,000 for the week. Okay, Mm -hmm. come Friday, come Friday, right? (laughs) I'm playing the same strategy, but it broke through the floor this time. So I should have gotten out, 
But I told myself, now not the market, I told myself, I told the market is going back up. The market said, no, Chris, we're going down. I said, no, you're going up. The market said, no, Chris, we're really going down. The market went down. Lost $10,000. I was up $12,000 for the week. Lost $10,000 on that Friday. So the emotional part says, I'm just hoping to, I'm I'm going from strategy to, to hope. Hope. There you go. This side of your, this side of your, uh, <laughs> this side of your shoulder is the person saying, get out, get out, get out. This person like, Ah, oh, Chris, stay in. And you it's like a battle. It's really like a battle. So it's about like cutting your losses. Cutting your losses. How much would you have lost if you'd have stopped when you knew you should have stopped? Oh, I had broke met the broke even. I, when I the moment I knew I should have got I should have got out, I would have probably been broke uh like hundred two dollars two hundred, three hundred dollars down. That's about it. Break even. Mm. I saw like I literally saw it happen, right? And um uh, it formed this thing called an H pattern. Like the market falls down. And then it bounces and come back up. And remember, I said I was playing the bounce straight. So we bounced and it was coming back up, coming back up. Then it hit the top of an H, like boom, like an H forming. Then it stopped. It stopped. And it couldn't break through. It couldn't break through. And I saw it starting to fall down. And I'm like, Chris, and I'm trading live at this time. I'm like, I'm like everybody in my Discord chat, we just broke the one year, one day trend line. You probably want to sell and get out, right? But I stayed in. I'm telling everybody to sell, but I stayed in. I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it. And I'm watching it. And now, now it's going down. And now I'm literally telling myself, Chris, Get out, get out, get out. But I said, I'm going to wait till it come back down to that where that H started at, where it bounced and came up. I'm going to let it come back down and see if it bounced again. It broke through that. I said, Chris, get out. I stayed in. It's like, it's really, it's. it's Are it's, you saying this on live? Like, yo, no, I I'm, should no, get I'm, out. Like, I'm, I'm talking. Like, I talk to myself all the time when I'm tracing people. You hear people's like, he's just talking to himself, y'all. Don't worry about it, right? And uh, so uh, I'm saying all this, like, Chris, get out, get out, get out. But I'm telling everybody else, Y'all should get out. And I'm telling myself, get out, but I'm staying in. But I'm saying, are you saying this live? Like, Chris, I need to get out. Get out. Oh, yeah. Bro, get yeah out. And, you're just letting, and you're staying in there. And you're staying telling in. them, like, yo, y'all should get out and right they now. See it, and, they see my, and they see my account balance going down to 2,000, 3,000, 4. They, they're watching it happen. Because like I said, I'm not going to let my, my computer just happen to turn off when I'm starting to lose. I'm going to let you guys see the meltdown. And that's what it was, a meltdown. It was a meltdown. Mm -hmm. Why couldn't you get out? It's the hardest thing to do. The hardest thing to do is to sell when you think that you are right. That's why you should always set a stop loss when you trade. Always set a stop you loss. You didn't set the stop loss. I didn't set a stop loss. Why not? You forgot or you or just out of arrogance? I, I, I didn't want to. <laughs> I didn't want to. You I think mean, you're that because, good, huh? You don't no, I didn't off? think it's the thing about it when and this is what people fail to realize, right? And I and I'd be completely honest, I tell you the truth about trading. When you go on a nice win streak, it it's a great thing financially, but mentally a loss is coming, but you've been winning, winning, winning for three, I mean, four, five, six, seven days. You feeling good about yourself. Like it's a, when I say the feeling of you winning this amount of money, like in November, I made like thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a month in November trading. It's a great feeling. But then a lot of people get hurt with that next loss that comes because you've been on this win streak and you hit this loss and now you like, I can, I can bully my way through it and it just, it hurts you. Mm. And, it, and I had to And that's why I had to start To control those things And that's why I say now When I told you at the beginning I don't trade with a 40, 50, 60 thousand dollar account I'm going to trade my 10 to 15 thousand dollars Boom, boom, boom And be good Because I know my, I know what's my weakness And that's my weakness play, Trading with a lot of money So You're saying And this you know, It's so crazy When you were saying it It applies to a lot mm -hmm. Of things in life mm -hmm. If you keep winning, you feel like you can't lose. Exactly. So almost kind of how, um, like you hear Mike Tyson telling these stories of how obviously he just kept knocking people out. So <laughs> right. the night before, he'll be out partying, drinking. He's like <laughs> kicking it because yeah. he's won so much, but that will be the thing that will kill you. Yeah. Yep, exactly. And it's, just, and it's the truth, right? But the thing about it is once it happened to you that once or twice, that's when you say, okay. I see it happen. I see it coming. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So now you prepare for it. But it's still, you kind of can't prepare for it, especially if you lose the feeling of, like, my point is, let's say, for instance, mm -hmm. you're winning. Let's just say, like, your business is doing well. You have another idea. That business does well. Mm -hmm. You feel like you're to go, and you just start doing so much, and you're over leveraged over in businesses. Exactly. Because you felt like you were doing well. Exactly. And you take that loss and you say to yourself, yo, that'll never happen to me again. But if you go long enough on another win streak, you forget the fact that you said you'd never do that again. Bingo. 
Yeah, that's true. You know what I mean? And, that, and that's why, and that's why I tell people, it's coming. Yeah. It's it like, like it's coming, and that's why I always tell you when I get to a certain amount, I take that money out. Because if the money, that's when, and, and that's the, and and that's why I started off saying what I did. Because when you have that money in your account and that stock is dropping and you're down, your thought process is, I can buy in more right now and offer this bounce, and it's going back up. I can make my all that money back because you can. But what happens if you put that money in there and that bounce doesn't bounce how you want it to bounce? Now you're losing more money faster, right? So it's, it's, it happens that way. And that's why you have to get the mindset risk management. That's why we have a counselor in our program. We have a counselor come every second Thursday to talk to people and give them that understanding of why, 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 why are you doing certain things you're doing? Because it's like, it's, it's serious. It's really a counselor. Yeah. Every second Thursday, a counselor come and talk to all, all the trades in the program. Golly. Yeah. I mean, that's how they get uh, people in Vegas. Because <laughs> you're down, and it's like, yo, I lost so much, mm-hmm. and I can't go home with this loss. Mm-hmm. And you'll see these people who, they're up, mm-hmm. and the worst thing that can happen is you go up. Oh, yeah. Because when you come down, you're like, oh, I remember the feeling being up. I got to get back, get back to up that. that first high. But then you keep going down. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like you a falling knife. You can't stop it, right? So, and, and that's the thing about it is, and that's why I tell people, listen, I did that. I did it. I know the feeling. I know the feeling of not being to stop it. So that's why when you asked me what was my largest win, I said 14000 You may have other people on here saying they made hundreds of thousands of dollars a day or, or millions of dollars. But I'm telling from what I know, what I can control and what I can handle, I can't handle trading with that much money. Yeah. How do we get that? Like, what advice would you give for people to be disciplined? Because mm-hmm. being disciplined gets boring, and eventually you just want to. This thing about it, I'm gonna be honest with you. Being disciplined when it comes to trading stock options does not get boring. Not mm-hmm. stock options, right? Because you're sitting here watching your account grow. You got to think about most people when they come into the stock. Think about this: most people when they come into the stock market, they've been doing something their entire life, their entire life, right? And for me, I try to sell vacuum cleaners. I try to sell knives. I try to do a lot of things, right? And none of that stuff worked for me. And I saw the stock market and I'm like, holy crap, I can make thousands of dollars a day. And what was the next thing from someone? What's the next thing somebody want to do the next time they do it? They want to make $100,000 tomorrow, yeah. right? But no, it's a process. If you think about it, it took you 30 years to get to even find out about trading. If you say, I can do this for the rest of my life. If I can make $300 every single day, that's $75,000 a year. If I make $100 a day every single day, that's uh, on average, right? That's $25,000 a year. Think about somebody working a full-time job right now. They make $50,000 a year, say, for example. What is one thing they probably say every month? If I did not have to pay my mortgage payment this month, I can get ahead. You trade stock options. You make $100 a day. Your mortgage is paid every single month. But people don't think like that. See that? That's, that's the thing about it. You, that's why I've been through it. Yeah. So when you, when, when, you, if you, when you come to me, I'm telling you, I spend time with you, and I'm telling you the real. Mm. Like, you do not have to make hundreds of thousands of dollars. Mm. Make sure your rent, light bill, gas bill, mortgage, phone bill, child daycare, if all of that is paid, from trading stock options, now you're going to wake up on December 31st, 2021 and look at your account. You got twenty five, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 in your account. Some people never had that amount of money in their account a day in their life. You know what the challenge is, though? Mm-hmm. And it sounds easy to do. It's the hardest thing to do. It's though. hard. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's say, for instance, yep. all of your bills are paid and mm-hmm. you wake up and you like trading is paying your bills mm-hmm. and you got money to do the stuff that you want to do. Mm-hmm. The money that you have is enough to pay for the things that you want to do mm-hmm. until you get around some people who are doing something else. Okay. So, okay, my my bills are paid. I can um I can take a trip mm-hmm. once a month. Yep. My bills are paid from trading. I'm good. I can take a trip once a month. So you get together with your friends mm-hmm. and y'all go on a trip once a month. And Dion is going on that trip and y'all meet at the airport and y'all be like, oh, great. We're at the gate Mm -hmm. and we're going on to the plane. Mm -hmm. Dion stops in first class to sit down. Right. CJ stops in first class to sit down. Right. And I go to the back of the plane. Right. Now, what I'm doing doesn't feel like it's working. Let me ask you this question. Think about this. So when you're trading stock options, 
if you were able to make that hundred, two hundred, three hundred dollars a day consistently, what have you gained? Um, a certain level of freedom. You gained a skill set. Yes. A skill set that you can do for the rest of your life. Correct. Think about this. The only difference from making a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars a day to making a thousand dollars a day is one thing buying more contracts. Right. If you sit there, if you're making two hundred, three hundred dollars a day, and now your account balance is sitting at ten thousand dollars, you can say, okay, I can probably make this two hundred dollars for like a minute, two minutes, because I got this, or you know, X, Y, Z, right? Mm -hmm. What if I buy a few more contracts? And now that two hundred dollars is turned into five hundred, six hundred, seven hundred. Now you've been trading for a year or so on, and now you understand the trends. You understand supply and demand, support and resistance. Now you understand. Okay, we're in a demand zone. I call it Big Mama's house, but we're in a demand zone. And this demand zone is bouncing. We're bouncing. We're bouncing. I'm going to buy in right here and play this bounce out of demand zone. Boom, you made a quick $800 to $1,000. Or well, you made a quick $2,000, right? It's some days I might make, I, on Instagram, you go to my Instagram page right now, you'll see I made, I made, I'm on there showing my screen, oh, I'm up $3,000, $4,000, right? I'm showing that because it's the reality of it. But it's not going to happen the first, it's not going to happen that first night, that first second day. It's a process. That's why when I say if you do it for the rest of your life, you got fifty thousand dollars in your account. You put two thousand dollars in your trading account. Now you're looking to make thousands of dollars a day. Yeah, but thought process is going to change. Everybody wants to hit a home run, bro. Yeah. No matter how disciplined you are, I'm telling you. Yep. After y'all sit in first class, I go to the back <laughs> of the plane. Right. Right. You say, "Yo, every every y'all want to do three excursions a day, yeah. and it costs bread." And you're like, "Ah, I can do one." <laughs> right. You're gonna go right. back home. Mm -hmm. You're disciplined, right? Yeah. But you're going to go back home, mm -hmm. and when you get in front of that computer, you're going to try to hit a home run because I want this thing. Right. I want to have this particular lifestyle. Go. I don't care. Yo, if if you won small wins for the last 30 days, you're like, oh, my gosh, this is I'm working. All right. Logically, <laughs> logically yeah. we're mm -hmm. saying, yo, I'm good at this. Let's go. Yeah. Let's, no, listen, I see it coming down. I should stop, but... Yeah. I need that first class. Plan, bro. <laughs> but that's the thing. That's the thing about it is this. When it's come to this trading stock options, you're, that's the per, that's the mindset. But it's I'm telling you, when you're trading stock options, you're seeing that account grow. You don't want it to stop. So, yes, you may try to do a home run. Right. Or you may that home run may be successful or you may fail. But the fact that you know that you can go into that market every single day and make X, Y, Z. Yeah. It's, it's going to stop you from, you you never, you, it's going to stop you from blowing up your account. Kind of. I'm telling I, you. I, I'm not in I'm trading. I'm not no, in No, I know. But, but I know good. humans, bro. So. Yeah. Same it's thing. It's like, it's the person who goes to the doctor and they've been drinking all their life mm -hmm. and the doctor says, yo, you got to stop drinking or you're going to die. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One week, two weeks, three weeks. I remember that I could die. Three months, four months, your best okay. friend's getting married. You forget the feeling of how you felt when you were mm -hmm. about to die mm -hmm. over like a long period of time. Again, I'm not I'm not trading. And maybe, maybe it is different, but I know that human beings get That's amnesia. Yeah, definitely. The, the first thing is, yo, all my bills are paid. I'm, I'm good. good with this hundred dollars, two hundred dollars a day, mm -hmm. right? But any bro, anything good gets boring. Any yo know, anything by longevity, right. you get tired of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. You the the woman you've been chasing forever. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're so beautiful. Right, y'all have been dating, but y'all are together for five years. Right, she's the same woman, but let's say you get more money, more status, right. and you're around another environment. Right. Now it's like you come home. I, I'm not as gotcha. I'm not gotcha. as attracted now. Right. You know what I mean? Right. No, I, it's, that, human, it's true. Bro. It's human nature. It's definitely human nature. And that's in, in the and thing. My wife's still bad, though. Mine, too. I don't want to smoke. Yeah, I'm just an example. You know what I mean? I'm still extremely right. attracted to my wife. Shout out to my wife. Definitely. But <laughs> you gotta put a clear, you married, you gotta put disclaimers on everything. Like, I mean, just exactly. an example. Like, me. I'm not saying anything. I'm just using this example. But no, but the thing about it, but that's the thing about it, I tell people about the stock market. Yes, that one or two hundred dollars, but there's no cap to what you can do. Mm. Like I can literally sit down every day and make two hundred, three hundred dollars if I wanted to. Yeah. But I don't, like you say, I don't take the three hundred dollars. 
I want the eight hundred thousand dollars, two thousand, three thousand. Yeah. Sometimes I've been burnt. Sometimes I have not. But over the course of time, I've learned to practice risk, more risk management because you get tired of going up and down, up and down, up and down. But to your point, yes, in life, people want that home run because that home run is beautiful. How do we stop them, bro? How do we I, save them? Great. From I don't think you run? can. I think somebody has to stop themselves, though. I mean, yeah. I'm going to. What I do is I show you and give you like every pitfall. Like the Bible says, the Bible says in every situation, there's a way out. He gives us a way out, right? So there's always a way out. But when that person's mentality get to a point where it's like, listen, I've built my account up to ten thousand dollars before, and I and I took it down to zero. If that person has that understanding and they build it back up to ten thousand again, every bone in your body should stop you from wanting to blow that account again. Yeah, yeah. Just want to stop you, man. Look, not even trading. I think this conversation applies to just everything in life. Everything in mm-hmm. life. Everything yep. in life. You know what I mean? So. Um, I want to know, because I know a little bit about trading mm-hmm. now, I'm, I'm learning more and more, shouts <laughs> out to Terry and Quay and all these people that do trading um, at a high level. What are your, what are your favorite patterns? Patterns, gotcha. So um, I normally, st- I don't, not saying I stay away from patterns, right? But I use um, EMAs, right? EMA? EMA, Exponential Moving Average. Okay. Okay. So it's this thing called, I call it decision making time. And this is how I find high, high probability trades. So it's a nine EMA and a 21 EMA. Okay. Whenever they're right beside each other, it's like they're dating in a dating relationship. Right. Explain it. I don't, I don't understand. So you got this, you got this, this, my, this hand right here is the nine EMA and this hand is the 21 EMA. Whenever they're like this, whenever they're like this, I consider that dating. They're right beside each other. So you're saying EMA, does it have anything to do with a candlestick or? So no, it's different. It's different from a candlestick. It's actually, it's actually the development of what the candlesticks are doing, right? Okay. So I mean, uh, I can definitely show it to you if you want me to. I don't. I it'd be it'd take too long to set up. Gotcha. That, uh, okay. That <laughs> but what happens is the nine EM makes a line. So think about it. Break down this way. Michael Jordan scored the first game. He scores twenty points. Yes. A line starts. Second game, he scores thirty points. The line goes up. 45 points, the line goes up. That's what the EMA is. It takes the average closing nine candlesticks and draws a line. Okay. Okay, so think about points per game with Michael Joy, right? So the nine EMA and the 21 EMA, if they're right beside each other, they're right beside each other, right beside each other. I consider that dating. And when they're dating, every time someone is dating, one person in the relationship always asks what question? So you're dating, you're going to Netflix, you, I mean, you're going to have to eat to the restaurant. What are we? What are we? <laughs> what are we, right? So they ask that question, what are we? If that non-EMA, so when they ask that question, what are we? That person wants to an answer, right? Mm-hmm. So the stock market tells you a beautiful love story. The same, the stock market's nothing but a love story. So boom, that non-EMA, if it starts to go up, I call that jagged edge. Meet me at the altar in your white dress. We're not getting younger, we might as well do it. Let's get married. We're going up. If that nine EMA starts to go down, we call that Chris Brown. It's never a right time to say goodbye, but I got to make the first move because I don't. You're going to start hating me. Mm-hmm. So that's one of the things that I use to make a high, uh, to find a high probability trade. So you're looking at these two lines. Mm-hmm. One goes up, one goes down. I mean, one, one, they're moving together. Moving together, dating, 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 well, dating. But once you see one. Start to make a move up or down. Move, up or down. If it goes up, jagged edge. Well, okay, so. The nine and twenty one. Yes, sir. Right? Mm-hmm. Is the nine following the twenty one, and then that's a good thing. Let's the twenty one follows the nine, so the nine moves faster than the twenty one. So if the twenty one follows the nine, mm-hmm. then we're getting married. We're gonna stick together. So we're ride this out. You focus more so on the nine. So mm-hmm. if the nine starts, the nine is doing this right here, and it starts to go up like that. That's jagged edge. Yeah. Need me at the altar in your white dress. If that nine even makes like this, and it starts to go down, Chris Brown. But the 21 is still going up. The 21 is going to follow whichever way the nine goes for the most part. Okay, I got you. I got yep, you. It's got like you. a slower lag to it. Okay, so you're pretty much, you're saying if you're seeing an uptrend pattern, mm-hmm. you are going to stay in the trade. If it goes up, you stay more, mm-hmm. right? But if you see it break a little bit, then you just get out the trade. So when it, now when you get in, that's that's recognizing the trade, first of all, right? So you recognize it's jagged edge, right? So, for example, if we jagged edge, we're going up. So the, that green line starts going up. If the green line is going up, that means the candlesticks are going up as well. Now, say, for example, we have a pullback, right? So, for example, the green line is going up, the candlesticks are going up, and then it comes back down some. When you're trading with the 9 EMA, this is what I do when you got a long, term, uh, a long time frame, like a one-year, one-day, or one-hour time frame, or four-hour time frame. Mm-hmm. If it comes back to the 9 EMA, that's an opportunity for you to get 
out or get in. So I'm asking you this question, right? If you're walking your dog and your dog runs away from you, what do you do? I don't like dogs, but I'll chase them <laughs> for the sake of your example. <laughs> so say the dog is on the chain, right? Yep. You have a dog on the chain and he runs away. What will you do? If he's on the chain, mm-hmm. I'll just let him run. <laughs> you got the chain. <laughs> Yeah, if he's on the chain, he can't go too far. You go, but if you got him in hand, do you, would you pull the dog back? Would you say, hey, I'm going to try to pull the dog back? Hey, man, I believe in freedom, okay? And my daughter <laughs> be doing the most. And my wife be like, yo, stop her. I'm like, yo, she a baby. Let her roll. You know I mean? Let her, oh, let her do her funny. thing. That's too funny. But, okay, so think about this, right? So, but if the dog is running away, the average person, right, is okay. going to pull that dog oh, back. Oh, no. dog. <laughs> okay, they're going to pull that dog back. So, when the candlesticks are going up mm-hmm. and they far away from the 90 in May, the owner is going to pull that dog back or the counterseat is going to come back to that 9 EMA. Mm-hmm. When it comes back to the 9 EMA, the dog has to make a decision. Am I going to continue to go back up and run away again? Or I'm going to run the opposite way. If the dog starts running the opposite way, get out the trade. Take your profits. If the dog bounces, goes, come back to the owner and starts running away again, keep going. Got it. I, I, would, have to, I would have to see that. Yep. I would have to see that with the, the 9 and the 21 EMA. So you don't do patterns? No, I still do patterns. I do patterns. What pattern I like head and shoulder patterns. I like uh, I like uh, head and shoulders. I guess I like this other one when you come when it comes down and break through support, and it makes a ha- a hammer, a shooting hammer, when it basically falls all the way down and then it shoots right back up and it make a hammer at the top of the candlestick. That's a signal for a potential reversal for me. So I like that as well. They call it the hammer. I just call them. Uh, I got my own names for things. Gotcha. To be honest with you. Did your wife trade too? No, she tried to. You tried to teach her? I tried to teach. She didn't want to listen. She wanted, <laughs> she, she wanted me to teach her how she wanted to learn. <laughs> she wanted me to teach her how she wanted to learn. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, but she, she always tell was me. Was it that she didn't want to learn or you were a bad teacher? Uh, Probably she probably she wanted to learn, but she wanted me to teach her how she wanted to learn. So she didn't it's want. Probably a bit of both. That's a whole other <laughs> dynamic, bro. You can't try to you, teach your try to teach your wife something like the hardest thing to do. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Like, and it's not even their fault. It's just it's a different dynamic mm-hmm. because if I'm your student and you're my coach, yep. I have a different ear, right? I respond yeah. differently. Mm-hmm. And it's easier to learn, right? Mm-hmm. I'm not getting offended by right. you calling me. Uh, calling me out on I, I'm doing something bad, right? Yeah, yeah. But if I'm your spouse, it's uh, like, who are you talking to? It's not an argument. Right. <laughs> it's the whole, whole argument in the household. Like, listen, I'm, all I was saying was, this is the support level, babe. You might want to buy in at the support level, not the, not the resistance level. I'm not saying that. Okay, I give up. Right. <laughs> I give up. But it's going to be your delivery too, bro. Exactly. You got it, 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 it's exactly. 50-50 because mm-hmm. I don't, like, for instance, I don't know how to teach my wife entrepreneurship. She's doing some entrepreneurial things. She's running our um, home health care business right now. That's she's dope. doing great. That's dope. But I don't know how to teach her, mm-hmm. and she doesn't know how to learn from me, listen for me. Yeah, I think it's just so. a different yeah, dynamic, it's, it's bro. Um, actually, what I did one time, I had um, I actually hired Donnie to coach my wife. And that worked out well. That's smart. Yeah, because they because re- they receive it different, and you can de- and 100%. your delivery to they may feel like your delivery is like harsh or something. One hundred percent. And it's rough though. Yeah. Oh, it's for sure. So. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, yo, uh, it's a good conversation, bro. Good conversation. Um, you have students. Yes. Mm-hmm. How many people are in your program? Uh, so the, the year long coaching program, we think we have like what 50, 60 people. Now we just started that one like nice. six, three, four months ago. Good. But um, we've trained over like a thousand people. Good, good. I, I I wanted to like just preface this because there's going to be um, a lot of people, like a lot of people like want to get on the podcast and be like, yo, Dave, I made this amount of money and mm-hmm. like I'm I'm a multimillionaire and that doesn't necessarily qualify them. Mm-hmm. And um, it's really cool because you still have a job mm-hmm. and it's not like you're making millions, but I think it's, um, it's, it's important to have like – people in all different stages of entrepreneurship that I get a chance to interview. Sometimes I just, sometimes I get people on the podcast because I like them as a person. <laughs> Dope. And I have my own yeah. podcast. So I can do, what I <laughs> do whatever want, you right? want to do. Right. And I, mm-hmm. I, I think you're just, you're just super transparent mm-hmm. and you're, you're giving people hope that, yo, I can have a job in a business and right. do it as well. So now nah, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. How, how do people get in touch with you or how do they connect with you? Yeah. So Def, I'm on uh, Instagram, CJack one thirty. Do not follow the scammers. They're going to hit you up and try to take all your money. <laughs> okay. Right. So I'm CJack130 on Instagram, uh, YouTube. You can find me as well. What's that name come from? CJack130. CJack130. I was a wrestler in high school and I, my weight class was 130. And it just 
see Jack one third just stuck with me. Mm. That, that's that's sure. the only thing I've been wanting to change for everybody. Just never have. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, so yep, and um, that's how you can find me. You can find me on YouTube as well. And I uh, trade live on YouTube every Wednesday. Mm. Uh, I put out content on YouTube. I'm building that page up right now. Good. Um, what do you th- give me a prediction of your life in the next five years? I think that'd be interesting because I want to watch uh. this five years from today and say. I talked to CJ. He said it. He said it. <laughs> uh, when I look, well, let me, I can, let me answer it this way. Let me look back at five years from where I'm at now, right? right? Uh, we were buying a house May 2017. We were buying that. Me and my wife was buying a house, right? And one thing that stood out to me was, and it hurt me, my wife had an Altima, and she paid that Altima off mm. with her own money, right? We had to put the down payment on our house. So we had to take that, take our title or take my wife's title for the car, take it to a bank and get a loan out on that car just so we can have the down payment to put on our house so we can move into our house. Wow. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. As a man, as a man that truly like can hurt you yeah. to see your wife and then the thing about it, she didn't even know she probably did it, but in the car she's like, I really don't want to do this. Yeah. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah. But I'm like, listen, we gotta kind of got to do this, right? And so five years from there to where we are now, I say all praise to the most high because he's definitely, he, um, my wife has an aesthetics business, right? So she, she quit her uh, teaching job. She doesn't have to do that. And she has her own business as an esthetician. And uh, so see where we are right now is crazy. Like all praise to the most high. Five years from now, the main, the, the focal point is always to have a strong relationship with the most high. Uh, make sure that my family, my wife, everyone is good. In that thought, in that thought process, and as far as business wise, I just honestly tell people wherever the Most High leads me, man, I want to make sure that uh, whoever He puts in front of me to teach them some type of skill set, mm-hmm. I can be the man or be the teacher or the coach or whatever I need to be to make sure that they get everything they need to do because I know where this, I know how it feels to walk into a bank and give your card to them and say, "Listen, I got it. Now I'm gonna make you a monthly payment plus make the, the mortgage monthly payment." Mm-hmm. So I just want to make sure I help people to get to where they need to be, and yeah. they can definitely do that through trading. I love it. I love it. Well, uh, give me something that I can point to five years from today. Say, yo, I did that. Five years from day, I did that. I was on David Shans about five, six, seven more times. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, I, I would truly say um, I was able to. I was able to make probably like a thousand people learn how to make at least fifty thousand dollars a year every day for the rest of their life trading stock options. I love it. Yep. And uh, do and the, I guess the and the main thing is I have. Uh, like masterminds, right? So I have a five-day stock option mastermind coming up. Uh, that's February 27th through March 3rd. And what I do is I teach you how to trade stock options from A to Z. Like we start with candlesticks from the very beginning. We go all the way to supply and demand uh, pivots and all that, all of those things, right? And uh, it's going to be crazy. Got uh, JT Automations and Myron Golden is going to be there as well. I love it. I love it. Well, look, man, um, I appreciate you. I appreciate your transparency. Just keep doing what you're doing, man. Yeah, keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, you are, uh, you know, a husband, a father, yes, right? Yes. Um, and just a real trans. You are, you are the, the example of someone who is uh, willing to like go through the process mm-hmm. of growing. You know what right, I mean? Like people right. just want to be successful, but that process is super important too. Yeah. So man, I appreciate you, my brother. Um, you, listen, make sure y'all follow uh, C Jack one thirty. Okay, <laughs> you still one thirty? Still one thirty for now. You still about one thirty? No, no, I'm not one thirty anymore. I'm about. <laughs> Ever since you start wrestling, you gotta change that. Exactly, definitely not one ninety. No, no, uh, make sure you follow him and uh, connect with this brother. Yeah. I, 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 I'm really uh, just impressed with mm-hmm. all that you're doing, man. And I'm, uh, I'm definitely gonna help out any way I can. Just keep grinding, bro. Definitely all appreciate right? it. Oh, absolutely. Make sure y'all share this out with somebody, okay? Somebody who has a job and a dream, they need to see this episode, okay? Go watch CJ trade. Live, <laughs> I want to see it, bro. Man, I'm, listen, yo, tune in. Tune send me, in. Send, yeah, hit me. Um, like before you do it, now gotcha. you said what, every Wednesday. Every right? Wednesday I do it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, hopefully, by the time you're watching this, he's still doing these Wednesdays. Uh, <laughs> but I want to. Uh, I want to see it. Yeah, I, gotcha. I'm really, and I. I don't know. Call me a hater, but um, I kind of want to see you lose and throw something <laughs> against the wall. 
Like I kind of want to see, I, I want to see like you. You, you want to see my emotion? <laughs> no, so I, I really, I nowadays, I, I'm, I'm more cool, calm, collective now. Cause I know, I know what's gonna happen. Not, not know what's gonna happen, but I know when I lose, mm-hmm. I'm gonna get it back, right? So uh, I'm more cool, calm, collective than I used to be. I used to be. I throw stuff. I remember one time. I know we got to get out of here. Uh, Donald Trump was about to make a statement. I waited all day to trade. I got into a trade. At uh, two o'clock, because whenever Donald Trump talked, the market just dropped down. Like, look, <laughs> Trump talking, market fall, right? So he started to talk. I made two thousand dollars in like fifteen minutes. Mm-hmm. Guess what I did? What? I wanted to make more. And guess what the market did? Went the opposite way, and I lost that two thousand dollars, right? So I stood up, grabbed something, I threw my bottle against the uh, against the wall. So I got to be the dumbest trader ever. And then, <laughs> then the crazy thing, my daughter gonna say, "What'd you say, Dad?" <laughs> I, was like, I was like nothing, babe, nothing. But uh, it that hey, I'm crazy. not that I'm not that. Uh, my emotions are definitely a lot more calmer now than they used to. Be. Good, good. I still want to see it. But, uh, <laughs> but look, man, make sure y'all follow my boy, um, and make sure you go get you some social proof. Meaning, go build something. Okay, spend time, energy, attention, uh, learning how to do something well, and go win really, really big. Get your social proof, but then come back to your community and teach them how you did what you did okay we are out of here peace you just watched this whole episode if you like this episode watch this one right here click right here you're gonna like this one if you like the one you just watched check it out you can do if let's say you just have cash right you have cash flow coming in you want to put your cash somewhere in the market you, you want to get to the market and you want to buy good companies long term um but you want to also you know create a residual income for yourself you can use options to 